This module evolved from some earlier work that we had conducted uh, that determined that our historic ways of doing habitat surveys were not repeatable and were not objective. And so we uh, basically reviewed the literature and found that some people in Australia and also in the U.S. were experimenting with doing point transect surveys to capture habitat information within streams. And we, we tried this technique in Ontario and found that we obtained much more repeatable and objective information and it also provided us with an opportunity to do post hoc evaluations of the habitat. And as a result, this module uh, has evolved over the last five years to become uh, what we refer to as our point transect methodology for uh, measuring habitat. Now Barb's going to be the recorder. She's like the coach. She's going to tell her staff what she wants them to do. So the first thing she's going to do is she's going to say, okay, what's the active channel active start channel. from? And he's trying to figure out how far it's going underneath. He's adding that to the edge of the tape here to find out how far the active channel goes in. 11.2. She just subtracts the two. You get 8.4. Is the active channel width? So use that now to calculate the spacing. 1.4 meters. Okay, she's divided it by six. She's got 1.4. This is the hardest part of the whole protocol. Getting this right. I guarantee you that at least once, if not twice or three times, you'll get this wrong, because you'll forget to divide the first one in two. 3.5, she tells that to Scott, who will set up the first observation point. 3.5. There's a rock in the way. So I have to slide it to the side. Okay. I do it to the middle of the ruler. One six five. One six five. Two zero. Two zero. Point rock. All right, so I do that, that, and there's my median. One, one, four. One, one, four. It had moss on it. Ooh, this one's bigger. Oh. Okay. Two, one, eight. Two, one, eight. Is the largest? Maximum check. Okay. I had unembedded. Good question whether it's round or flat. The longest. It's close. It is close. One eight zero. The shortest is. <laughs> it's right 80, on them. Yeah, it's well, it's eighty eight. So it's flat. Eighty eight. So it's flat. Just. That's a good one. Any other? And it's got moss on it. Moss. You can see the. Filaments on it. This technique is uh, relatively labor intense. It takes anywhere from two hours to two and a half hours to, cap to capture the information. And so it should really be used in areas where you have an interest in fairly accurate information about habitat and how it might change over time or over space. Twenty-two. 
And it can also be done in parts. You don't have to collect all of the information along each of the transects or at each of the points. You could apply parts of the module if the study design only required certain information, which would increase the efficiency of the crews, although you lose that ability to look at a holistic view of the stream. So never do it this way. I always do it the other way. So this way, less. Oh. How yeah, do lay we... it down. Yeah. This one? Yeah, and then measure the other one too. From the top of the water to the ruler. So that log is in the water. It's greater than 10 centimeters at that median axis. It's covered. Okay? This module is uh, sensitive to capturing all of the habitat information. So the thing you need to watch out for is that regardless of where the transect lies, you have to collect the information along that transect. And occasionally that means sampling in deep water. Uh, we don't want to put anyone's safety at risk, but you do have to watch for sampling in deeper waters. Um, the other thing you need to watch out for is in areas where there's lots of agriculture or urban development. There may be sharp objects in the stream that you should watch out for in terms of making sure you don't cut yourself Point or your sand. waders. In the right width. Yep, it is. I've got unembedded wood cover. Okay, this is a bank measuring tool. This was designed, it's got a, a level built onto it. It's got the, uh, the graduated marks of the 0, 250, 750, and 1.5 meter mark. Uh, it uh, has a wing nut that allows you to uh, place the tool at the bank water interface and extend it a meter and a half back into the bank. The, uh, the level reading level and the, uh, the wing nut, you can tighten that up. It's important to note that it, it doesn't have to be touching the, uh, the bank at the back end. The, uh, the way the system works is it's just a, uh, a logarithmic um, calculation based on the angles, where it calculates an angle automatically from the, the measurements from the bottom of the, of the tool to the, um, to the bank in all cases. So if the back end isn't touching the, the bank itself, it's fine as long as the, the, the distance is measured. So once we've got it set, we just measure the distance from the, the zero mark to the to the bank. In this case, it's 720 millimeters. We measure the particle size at the point of uh, contact down there. Use the the field test. In this case, it's it's I can feel the, the grains of sand in my fingers by rubbing it, so I know that's sand. The 250 mark, 610 millimeters. In this case, it's it's uh, it's slippery. It's um, soft, so I'm going to call that silt. The grittiness isn't there. 750, 410, and this time I landed on a a particle, so it gets measured the same way as the particles in the stream. 53 millimeters. To so the last one, 95. And it's silt. Any undercut, Scott? No undercut. No undercut. 360. 360 at zero. Sand. Sand. Two fifty. This grid here has rooted vegetation right there. This grid here has rooted vegetation. This one here does not. There's no rooted vegetation in that one. And this one here, no rooted vegetation. Seven. Dominant live vegetation in here. One meter, one meter. There's no trees in here that are uh, uh, 10 centimeters diameter breast height, but there are uh, shrubs, so it's scrub. Okay, what's that distance? All right. 
Right there? Okay, I got it. 